As a Salesforce developer, I am often tasked with sending Salesforce data to third-party systems. Often my clients want a real-time data sync when updating records. This means leveraging Apex triggers to support this feature. However, the first problem we run into when adding a callout to the trigger is the following. The simple fix to this error is taking our processing out of the current transaction. This can be accomplished using Asynchronous Apex, or Async Apex for short. Async Apex refers to the following patterns, queuable, future, schedulable, and batch. While all of these have different uses, the interface I am using the most is queuable. Queuable classes allow us to take a complex problem and break it into smaller pieces. We can then solve these individual problems easier. You can do things like pass in a list of records, then process each record individually. We can continue to do this until the list of records is empty. To create a queuable, we can start with a blank class, then implement the queuable interface. We also want to implement the database.allowsCallouts interface to communicate with third-party systems. Now, we need to add a constructor method, which will allow us to pass context for our smaller problem. Generally, I am passing in a list of records to run until the list is out of records. I'm also passing in a stack size for debugging purposes. These constructor variables can then be assigned to class variables, which can then be used in the next required method, the execute method. This is the method that runs when a queuable is triggered and our processing is performed. We can take the first record from the list and make the required callout. This is great, but we want to process the whole list of records, not just the first. We can turn the queuable into a recursive process to do this. Recursion is the idea of a function calling itself to solve a smaller problem. In this case, we have a list of records to start with. We then make a callout to a third party system for each record. If we want to chain our processing on a list of records, we can use the following code. We can also add a delay of one minute in between runs as well. Now that the record processing is complete, we can go ahead and add this to our trigger. To do so, we need to enqueue the queuable from our trigger. Here, we can pass in the records we want to process and a stack size of zero. But there is a hidden problem. In its current state, every contact will update will enqueue an additional queuable. This will cause the following error. This is because each child queuable job can only spawn one additional child job. This limit is in place to avoid an infinite spawning of queuable jobs and allows us to process records as needed. The way we can resolve this in our current code is by checking if the current transaction is not a queuable. This will ensure that there is no infinite looping occurring. One small thing you can do to help me is subscribe. This lets me know to make more content just like this. Before queuables were introduced in the Winter 15 update, futures were used for async apex. They function similar to queuables, but have limitations like they can't use full records, can't be monitored in the apex job screen, and can't chain for list processing. With these limitations in mind, it's almost always better to use queuables, but there are niche scenarios that future methods are still necessary today. Let's take our previous example of processing the list of records. We need to perform the following, call out to the third party site and update the record with DML. The order matters in this case. We cannot make additional callouts after the DML statement. If we wanted to also send an email to the contact, we would run into the same problem. Assuming we needed data from the callout, we cannot send an email with the previous pattern. If we use the single email message class before updating the record, the email will contain stale data. And if we update the record, then send the email, we will receive a callout error. To get around these DML limits, we can send the email using a future. This allows us to work with fresh data as well as still send the email as desired. We can do this by annotating a function with the at future decorator. We can then add a parameter of a contact ID. Remember, no objects allowed. From here, we can send the email using the send email message class. We can then run the future by calling it as a normal method in our original class. But if real time syncing isn't what you're after, we can schedule jobs using the schedulable interface. This allows us to use cron jobs to schedule background processes. 
To use this in a class, we can implement the schedulable interface as well as the execute method. Execute method will run when your class is called from the scheduler. While the schedulable interface can be used on its own, it's often combined with batch classes. This is because schedulable classes cannot make callouts unless it is also implementing a batch class. The final way of processing data asynchronously is batch. This is either used to schedule callouts hourly or process data at a large scale. And to create a batch class, we can implement additional interfaces to achieve this. With the new interfaces, we will want to implement a few new methods. A start method where we are retrieving the records we are looking to process. This can either be a string or a SQL query. Additionally, we will want to instantiate our batch class from our previous execute method to call the class when ran from the scheduler. There is also an additional execute method where the second parameter is the type of object that we are looking to process. This is also where all the processing is done for our records. And finally, a finish method that will run when all data processing is complete. This can simply debug or can launch additional batch jobs if needed. And that's everything you need to know to get started with Async Apex.